Sefre Kandos Zazia Randes Empre Katosh Nadia Mazefre Hendes Zia Randes Empalus Katosh Nadia Mazofre Hendes Zia Randes Risan The Spirit of God is real He is more real than I am to you right now he is more tangible than I am to you right now. Everything that is written in the word of God is more tangible. It can be converted from words to realities. Everything that we read in the Bible can be converted to words into realities. And it depends with how much a man needs to wait on God by faith to see the tangibility of what is written in the word of God. There is a spiritual realm that is real. There is a physical realm that is what is happening in the spiritual realm I want to teach you about the reality of the spiritual realm that can be made touchable on the physical realm Hallelujah. the spirit of God was speaking to me and he told me son if you can see it in the spirit you can manifest it in the physical because that which is invisible is what gives birth to that which is visible even Jesus Christ had an existence here on earth and also in heaven. Let us just have our seat for less than 20 minutes and then we stand up. By the time we are getting to seven in the night, we will have pushed this dimension to be visible. Praise the Lord. Now stay with me. Don't lose me. Stay with me in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now let us begin with the book of John chapter 3 and verses 13. John chapter 3 and verses 13. Hallelujah. Help me on the monitors. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. Now, I want us to read all of us together. I show you a reality in this verse that there is an, a possibility in God for a man to exist on earth and exist in heaven at the same time. That is the reality that Jesus Christ came to bring to us on the face of the earth. The reason Jesus Christ came, it was not just about the taking away of our sins, but it was about bringing man to an understanding that the realities of heaven can exist on the realm of men as it existed in him. Jesus came as a prototype of that which is the original ideal of God. The problem is what happened in the Garden of Eden that continues to pull man to the Garden of Eden when God is pulling men to the realities of Zion. That it was a change that when we moved from the Garden of Eden, we were moved to a place called Zion. Now the Bible says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. Now, I want you to read as if you are seated together with Jesus the day he was teaching this word. And I pray that the spirit of God begin to open your minds so that you can be back 2,000 years ago or so, and so that you can be real today and see the difference. Now the Bible says, no one has ascended to heaven. Now, he was answering a question in the book of Deuteronomy when they were asking, who shall ascend to heaven so that they can hear God for us and bring us the message of Elohim? So when he was speaking to them, he was answering a desire that was invested in the life of man because originally man was a heavenly being that was created to exist on earth. So the realities of the Garden of Eden are the same realities that are in heaven, but man has to bring them to existence here on earth. God created man to be a spiritual being with a body. The original intention of God was that man will be a spiritual, body, a spiritual being, but with a body, not a physical being with a spirit. That is why it did not, it was not completely finished at the cross. At the cross, it was finished. It was not completely finished in regards to what God wanted. It was finished in regards to your salvation and the cleansing of your sin. But to be 
completely finished. You needed to become the being that God wanted from the word go. And the being that God wanted, I will break it down, don't worry. We will read scriptures in just a short while. The being that God wanted was a spiritual being. I, that has a physical body. Praise God. Did God create his breath before he breathed it to Adam? <laughs> Did God create his breath before he created Adam? So his breath existed. And man, the body, without the breath, is dead. So what existed first? Is it the body or the breath of man? What existed first? Is it the spirit of man or the body of man? So God had already a spirit being in him that needed to be expressed on earth. And the only way for that being to be expressed on earth, it required a body. So he created a body and then breathed his breath that was already in him so that the body became a living being so that that spirit being that was in him that needed to rule on the face of the earth may find a body so that it can exist on earth. I bring to you and I submit to you that you were first a spirit being. The day you were born by your parents, you were first a spirit being. But this spirit being that needed to be seen on the face of the earth needed a body so that it can exist on earth. It's the same with Jesus. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man, who is in heaven. Now, Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus. You remember the story? And Nicodemus was asking him, how can, uh, how can we inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus began to tell him, unless a man is born of the spirit, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God, right? And then he continues to teach. And as he is heading towards salvation, even before the salvation of man, he began to show Nicodemus the reality of a man existing on earth while he is still existing in heaven. He told him, you don't need to go back to your mother's womb so that you can be born again. There is a system in God where men are born, big grown men, because they were first spirit within the spirit of God. Now he tells him that as you can see me here, the Bible says, he who, it is only him who descended, the one he was seeing physically, but the man he was seeing physically was still a man that was already in heaven. Now, Sasa, Yesu anaongeresha Nicodemus Jim. Vile tunaongea na wewe. Now, Yesu anaambia Nicodemus, unajua niaje? Unaona vile unaniona hapa? Yule tu mwenye naweza kuja hapa ni yule alitoka juu. Na vile niko hapa juu ndivyo nimekaa katika mkono wa kuume wa Bwana. That is the reality of the men who are born again. That we are supposed to be seen on the face of the earth like we are gathered here. We gather as men with our physical bodies here on earth because a body is needed here on earth but there is another gathering that is taking place the same as this one that is of spiritual beings the voice of God is still being heard by spiritual men today from the mouth of the Lord to their ears Can we take a journey very fast? Now, the Bible says, Father, help me. There's a lot to say, and I want to say all of it. The Bible says, God created, in Genesis chapter 2, God created, formed man from the dust. Then when he formed man from the dust, I want to take a very quick journey, then we enter into spiritual things. We take care of the physical, then we enter the spiritual thing. That God created man, formed man, Genesis chapter 2, must be verses 7, that he formed man from the soil, right? When he had formed man from the soil, he breathed his breath into man. Now man, in that formation, looks as if he was formed from two things. One was a physical thing that is called Adam, a soil from the earth. Praise God. But then there was a breath that was coming from God. A breath that is of God. So nothing was created about God. Including his body, if he has one. Including his eyes. The Bible says he sees. All things that we have studied in the Bible. There is nothing that was created about him. So if it is coming out of him, it was not created. So if the breath came out of God, there was no creation of that breath beforehand. 
So God, God created man with a physical body so that he can exist on earth because there is a requirement on the face of the earth. Because of time, matter, and space. Matter is the body. So he created the body. But then the existence of that body was not required to exist according to the will of man. It was formed to exist according to the will of God. Now, the will of God is vested in the spirit of God. So he breathed. I will show you the difference. The will of man is vested in the soul. But the will of God is vested in the spirit. I will show you in a while. So he breathed unto man his spirit. Now, when the breath came unto man, another thing was created. It's called the soul. Can I teach very fast? Now, when man was created with the soul, what happened in the Garden of Aden uh, is that a triune existed. The body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, the Bible says in the book of Exodus 25 and verses 40, I told you everything that is have a, everything that is happening in the spirit is manifested on earth. There is nothing you see on the physical earth that does not have an expression in the spiritual realm. But there are things in the spiritual realm that do not have an expression on earth. Can I repeat that? Everything you see on earth has a spiritual expression in the spiritual realm. It either exists in the heavens or in the heaven. In the heavens, it exists because of the manipulation of the devil. That is where they are rulers of dark places and all that. But in heaven, it exists because of the will of the Father. Now, whatever you see on earth, even you, you exist somewhere in heaven. There is a spiritual realm where you exist. Even the dead... Even the dead exist somewhere. The spirits of the dead exist somewhere. We'll show, I'll show you in scriptures. I'm just trying to bring it. The Bible says, and see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. So if anything needed to be done on earth, including the building of the tent of meeting, Moses ascended on the mountain and God showed him a sanctuary that is in heaven. Now, he told him, this sanctuary that is in heaven, this is the reality I want to see on earth. So when Moses descended from the mountain, he came to build the sanctuary as he had seen it in heaven. Praise God. Now, the same way God created man, it is a reality of that sanctuary that Moses saw. That when he created the body, it is the outward expression of what can physically be seen. So when we go to the study of the tent of meeting, we see the outer court, what men can see. If you're writing now, you should be writing. That the body is, the, is represented symbolically by the outer court of the tent tent of meeting because the body can physically be seen and can be touched men can see what you express when you are outside you are outside is expressing when you manifest anger men do not need a spiritual discernment they will see you lifting up your hand and slapping somebody <laughs> praise the lord praise the lord i love my brothers now when, when we want to see, in the tent of meeting, when men brought, or even in the temple of, of Solomon, when men brought goats and cows, everyone else had the tent, the outside thing. Everyone else could come to the outside. The same way, everyone has a reality of a body. Whether they are worshipping God or they are worshipping the devil, they have a reality. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. Amen. Now, the outside tent, part of the tent, Allah. the lighting was of the sun. So everyone does not need any illumination from anywhere for the body to exist. You can see it even when somebody is dead, you can see he is here, he is dead. You don't need an illumination to see that dead person. Then we enter into the holy place. The Bible calls it the holy place. Praise God. That is the soric part of a person. Now, the sonic part of a person has two, di has two dimensions. It can either incline to the will of the body or can ascend to the will of the spirit. Now, I told you from the word go that man existed as a spiritual reality first. So, if you exist into the realm of the spirit, according to the spirit of God, the realities you will express is the mind and the heart of God. But if you exist, if you fall and your spirit is dead, then it means you can only speak or be controlled by your body. That is what men call fresh. And Pastor Jimmy has ever heard of that topic in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and verses 2. He spoke about Christians who are spiritual Christians and who are carnal, 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 carnal beings. So now, in the 
tent of meeting or in the tabernacle of, of or, or the temple of Solomon, in the place of or, or what the place we call the holy place, there was the ram stand. The provision of right in that dimension was the ram stand that had seven candlesticks. Praise God. Now, those seven candlesticks is the reality that exists in the soul of a man. It is the will of man, where man decides according to my will. That is why according to the illumination in a man, he will say there is no God. That is as much as they can see. Uh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this kingdom belongs to us and even our children. Praise God. Yes, it's somewhere in the book of Acts chapter 2. Now, listen, now so that we can finish. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, now that illumination, this is what I, I, I was trying to bring home, that illumination that exists in the Soric realm comes from the will of man. The will of man can be influenced by the body. Now, I want to deal with something here very critical about people who have been going through addictions. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. There is a self-deliverance dimension through out of any addiction. It doesn't matter the level of addiction you have entered into. There is a self-deliverance angle in the word of God that can be able to pull out that addiction from you. Because that addiction does not exist in your spirit. It exists in your soul. Now, if the light you are receiving in your soul is the light of God, then light of God casts out away every darkness. So if your soul begins to feed from the spirit, you are able to push away the darkness that is in you. Whatever we call strongholds, they don't exist in the spirit. A man who is unregenerated, a man who is, born, who is not born again, has a dead spirit. Any person you meet and they are not born again, they have a dead spirit. So their spirit is not functional. What is dead? cessation of communication from the environment. Yeah. So if you are spiritually dead, there is cessation of communication from God. Oh. Praise God. So now, if your soul is the one that is directing your body and your spirit, because your spirit now is dead to them that are not born again, then they follow the will of the body. Praise God. That is why Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says that we, we are dead. Because we followed the, we obeyed the prince of the air, following the rust of our eyes and the rust of our flesh. And in which you once walked according to the causes of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The next verse, the Bible says, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the rust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So the existence of every addiction that a person goes through, it exists in their soulic realm. Now, if the soulic realm begins to absorb from the reason why we have gathered here, that is, there is an outpouring of the Spirit of God. If the soul realm begins to absorb from the, soul, the Spirit of God, then there cannot be an existence of a stronghold in your mind. That is why a man will sit down and configure in his mind to go in his phone to search a certain site so that it can activate his body. It is the soul that is directing a command to the body. Because the spirit of a man is a mistress or a master. The spirit, the soul of a man is a steward. The body of a man is a slave or a servant. So when the, when the steward receives from the master an order, it commissions the body to act. So if you can be able to deal with your soric dimension, how do you deal with your soric dimension? We are going to get there. You can be able to uproot yourself and master the body. There is an ability in man to master the flesh. It is written in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that a man can get hold of his own vessel. There is an ability in man to hold this body and command the body. But then the spirit must be alive. Praise God. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. 
that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. So there is an ability that is already inbuilt if the correct order of God is taken in place even a man. There is an ability in man to hold on his vessel and command his vessel. There is an ability of a man to abstain from any kind of addiction by his own through the spirit of God. How did men like Paul survive without a wife? He's complaining in the book of 1 Corinthians. He's complaining. We are not, we are not like Kephas and the others who are coming with their wives. Uh, Pastor Jimmy, I consider that to be the thorn that was on Paul. In Paul's flesh. I don't want these thorns. <laughs> So he was able, but then he says that, that I cause my body, I beat up my body. I cause it to be my own slave, lest when I have preached to you that I myself shall miss. Praise God. So there is an ability to keep yourself. Ah, yes, it is possible. We don't want to go to examples, but yes, it is possible. Do, do we have no right to take a wrong a believing wife as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord, and Kephas? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. All Barnabas and the others. I, I, I want to, I want, I'm, I'm trying to move on very fast. I don't want to put Jimmy there and Ken and everyone else. Now the Bible says that only the priest would enter in the holy place. Yeah. Only the priest. Every other being was not allowed to enter into the holy place. Now, it is the, that is why the Bible says that Christ has made us to become kings and priests because there is a priestly role that is supposed to take place in the solic dimension of a man. Now, Jesus becomes the mediator between the, in the high priest according to the realms that Jesus Christ now becomes the priest in between realms, but within the body function, the priest is the man. You are the priest of your own mind. Whatever sacrifices are offered there, you are the one who takes them to those altars. But when we speak about the heavenly altar in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 9 from verses 11, the person who takes care of the high priestly dimension in that level is called Jesus Christ. Now, ah, I love where we are going. Now, after you've dealt with the, with the soul, the soul contains a life. There is an immortal life in every man's soul. That is why every man is a candidate of everlasting life. Every man is a candidate of everlasting life. Every man actually will enter everlasting life. The only question is where you will spend it. <laughs> that is the only question. I love it. Apostle Joshua Salman said that it hit my eyes between, because I, I always thought men will die. You will die, you will die. Even death itself will be put into the pit of hell into the fire, including them so that there is no dying anymore. You, death, and every sinner shall be combined together. So you can't die. Where are you going to go? Well, death is already there. It is also being punished. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Ah, I want to learn very fast because I want to say something before seven. Now, the Bible says, but then there is the holy of holies. Now, between the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place is the veil. Are we together? Now, the reason Jesus went on the cross is so that the veil can be broken. Praise God. Now, when the veil is broken, it is not just the high priest who can enter the Holy of Holies, but now we can also enter and dwell. That is why I told you there is a spiritual realm where there is an, a reality of existence. Now we don't enter the Holy of Holies ready to come out the next minute. No, you can actually dwell in the Holy of Holies. It is possible for men to see a physical body here on earth, but the man does not exist on earth. Those realities are in the Bible, captured by a man called Paul. The Bible says, I don't know if it is by spirit or it is by body, but I know of a man. For 14 years, he existed in the spiritual realm, in the third heaven. 
The same way Jesus was saying, it is not he who will ascend and descend. I am the one, the son of man who is in heaven. The same way Paul was speaking in manner of speech. It is just about semantic. Paul was also telling them the same thing, that I know a man. Like the same way Jesus was appearing physically on earth, carrying the cross and doing miracles, but still seated on the right hand of God. I, Paul, can also existed in that dimension that I walked in Tulsis and other places, but when men saw me there, I was still seated at the right hand of God, also listening from God. The revelations of the mysteries that Paul carried was because of the position of his sitting. Now the problem is, men are still sitting on their soul. They are not sitting in their spirit. Whatever happens in the outer court, whatever happens in the holy place is commanded by what happens or what is said in the holy of holies. So if men do not exist in the holy of holies, they cannot be able to translate what God is saying. Because the Bible says in the Holy of Holies, there was no light. The only light that existed in the Holy of Holies is the light of God. That is why when Paul is writing to Timothy in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16, or chapter 4 verse 16, you can check for me. Uh, he says, unto the immortal God who dwells in an approachable light. So the Holy of Holies did not have light. The only light that lights up that place is the glory of God. That is why the new heaven and the new earth will not have a sun or a moon. The one that will light up those dimensions is only the glory of God. So when men begin to exist in the holy of holies, what illuminates their life is not the light. It is not the light that can be seen by men. It is the glory of God that exists in them. Praise God. Now, when Jesus came, this is what I, now all that was introduction. Let me preach. <laughs> Praise God. When Jesus came and he was on the cross dying, the death would have ended when he said it is finished and he would not require to go to the grave. On the cross, when Jesus said it is finished, the work that was complete was in regards to redemption and the salvation of men. Now, if Jesus at the death of the cross, the story ends there, we will not have continued to exist on earth when we get born again. We would have, on the day you receive Jesus, you go to heaven. But now God did not need man to only be holy in the spirit. He needed man to be holy in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 23 gives us the outline that the existence, the way of operation, the pattern of God in the spirit, as Moses had seen it and built it according to pattern, the pattern that we must build is the building of the spirit so that the spirit can dictate what the soul will do and the soul will command the body on the way of the walking of the body. Praise God. Now, when man fell into sin, what died was his spirit. So if because the spirit of man was dead, the command that was being received by the body was from the soul. And the soul was receiving dictation because of communication. Because if you exist in two things, only those two things can communicate. Now, the soul of a person has the will, right? It has the will, it has the, it has the emotions and the feelings. So man was acting according to the flesh. But Jesus came in the way of the flesh, not because of anything else, so that he can defeat sin in the flesh. And when he defeated sin in the flesh, he went into the grave because there is something that was required in the grave that could not have just been found in the cross. What was required in the grave was a bathing of the spirit. So that is why when the Bible is speaking about Regeneration, the bathing of a new man, it does not end by the regeneration of the washing in the book of uh, Titus, in the book of Titus chapter 3 and verses 5. It does not say, it does not end by the regeneration of the washing, but it says, and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Because man lost the Holy Spirit, the communication of God to man is by the Holy Spirit to the spirit of man. Can I repeat that again? The communion of God and man 
does not happen in the soul. It does not happen in the body. Yes, it is the body that brings you into the church. But the communication of God, it doesn't happen to the body. It happens only in the soul. Because it is when the soul of a man is interpenetrated with the soul of God. With the, it is when the spirit of a man is interpenetrated with the spirit of God. That the spirit of God emits life. Because the life of God, the Zoe life of God exists in his spirit. That the spirit then... It is emitted into the soul and the soul transits or translates that life into the body. You see, if man never fell to sin, if man ate the tree of life, he would never have died. The body would never have died. I was reading about Moses and the Bible says that Moses was 120 years old. His body was still intact. His eyes were still seeing. Why? Because when he ascended into the mountain and interacted with God and his body was translated by the glory of God that is in the holy of holies that illuminates the body. It's what he descended with. We are never told that the face of Moses ever learned out of glory. It is not in the scripture. So I, because the Bible tells me he came with glory, he continued to walk with that glory. The preservation of that glory con contained the body and the soul of Moses to be intact. That is why when he died, an angel was sent from heaven to come and take his body. Because if that body was invested by another spirit, that is not of God. But this is the reality that we have been called into. All of us. All of us. Men exist in spirits. And they exist in a spiritual realm. First Peter chapter 3 and verses 18. Let's read here. Then we stand up and pray. Sindio? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Well, I love the person who is there. He is better than even me. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake... You are blessed. Verses 18, sorry, sir. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So where does the life, the thing that brings men alive come from? It comes from the spirit. It is the spirit that quickens the body. Romans chapter 8 verses 11. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is also in you that causes you, brings immortality to you. So when you begin to receive from the spirit of God. Now I have gone ahead of myself. Now understand this. When Peter is teaching the, the church in the book of Acts chapter 2. The problem is I hear time is ringing on my head. Now that is the biggest problem I have right now, Percy. Now. When Peter is in the book of Acts chapter 2, when Peter is speaking to them, he begins to tell them that that which was prophesied by David, praise God, that he will not see decay, neither shall his soul be left into, into head. It is the same that has happened to Jesus Christ, him you crucified, that now he has been raised from the dead and has become Christ and Lord. And then he has fulfilled the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what was being manifested among, um, among the believers who are in the upper room was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now God, even today, because of the results of the grave, what continues to be existing from the grave is the, the, the bringing forth of the Spirit of God. Can I show you something very fast? That graves are supposed to bring out us to life. You see how light comes out of darkness? Death is supposed to bring life. So the death of Jesus Christ, if you were together, abode together with him in death, then the results of, your, of resurrection belongs to you. That is what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verses 5. Praise God. That is the same thing that happens. That if you are enjoined together with him in death. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Praise God. Now on the day that Jesus died. Let's, let's go to the last page so that we finish. In the book of Matthew chapter 27, 50 to 53. Did you tell your parents we have a Kesha today? Okay. <laughs> and, Jesus, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Praise God. Now something happened. The Bible says, 
Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Now the next verse. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Now, when you are reading this verse, you must, you, might, you must be able to read the whole of it. And Pastor Jimmy always says that the context and the content must be able to bring out the information, right? Now, so if you read up to there, you will think that the time Jesus sent out his spirit is the time that the earth quaked and the graves opened and the dead woke up. No, but you must read it with the eyes of the Spirit. Let us go back and begin again in verses 50 so that we can read with open eyes of the Spirit. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. The next verse, the Bible says, Then behold, the veil of the temple... I read loudly. The next verse... And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. The next verse. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the Holy Spirit. So when did they come out of the graves? So now, if we have been combined together with him, in the likeness of his death and the same results of his resurrection is what has happened to us. What happens to you in the time of baptism, you die to, we, together with him and you wake up to the reality of your spirit walking into the holy city. And when we speak about the Holy Spirit, I told you, men exist in two realms, the spiritual realm and the physical realm. When we speak about you are walking into the Holy City, we are not speaking about you walking into Jerusalem in somewhere in Israel. We are speaking about you walking into the holy mountain of God, the city of the living God, the Jerusalem of, of heaven. We are just men whose spirits have been made perfect, gathered together. So the day you died with him into the baptism, him and lose up together with him. What happened is that you were quickened in the spirit and your spirit men woke up and ascended and joined together with spirits of just men. It is a reality. Can I show you how real it is? Take us to the mountain of transfiguration. No, let us read faster for Hebrews chapter 22, uh, chapter 12 verses 22. I just want to show you a few things here. We might not even pray after this, but when you go home, you will pray, I know. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. So when those spirits, when the graves opened up, I will show you where the graves opened in the book of Ezekiel 37. But for now, let, us, let, let me explain something. When the graves opened after the quaking and the spirit of just men woke up, when they woke up, they walked up into Mount Zion, into the city of the living God. It is the one that is called the holy city. It is called the holy city because that is what its, its name is in the book of Revelation 21, verses 2. The Bible says, and I saw the new heaven and the new earth, verse 1. Verses 2, it says, and I saw the new Jerusalem, the holy city. So when the Bible says that them that were in the grave woke up from the grave and their spirits were seen, or they were seen walking, they woke up and took up their heavenly bodies. What is the heavenly body? It is Christ. That is why the Bible says, and you saw the Son of Man who is also in heaven. So the only person with a body in heaven is Jesus. And he did not receive the body on the day that he was born by Mary. He was sat from the beginning. We don't have time to teach. The reality of the body of Adam did not exist first on earth. How could the invisible create something that is visible and it does not exist in the invisible? Hebrews chapter 11 verses 3. By faith we know that the word of God created all things. That that which is invisible created the things that are visible. So if there was a visible Adam, there must have been an existence of another body somewhere in the spirit that is invisible. That is why Jesus told Nicodemus that it is he who descended, even the son of man, he who is also in heaven. The reality of him existing with a body in heaven did not just happen because of the exchange. 
No, not because he was born by Mary. That reality already has already been ha happened eternally. He existed in that dimension as the son of God even before the earth and the heavens were created. Unless you tell me the son of God was created after Adam. Praise God. He says to them, you say you are sons of Abraham. Why don't you do like Abraham did? Then they asked him, do you want to say that you existed before Abraham? What did he tell them? That Abraham saw my day. And he was excited. He was happy about it. So he existed before Abraham. The reality of Jesus Christ, even with his body, existed before Adam. Praise God. Now, I am so lost. Where are we? Now, in the book of, we are in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22. I want to show you a few things, my brothers, then we go. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. This description is a description of something happening only in heaven. Because we have not seen that new Jerusalem yet, but it exists. It is not being created. The new Jerusalem exists. God right now is not in the business of creating anything. Right now, it is what is in heaven that is manifesting. It's the same thing. The day we say, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Now, when the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, can I explain to you something? That day when the Holy Spirit came down, the day of Pentecost began as according to the understanding of men. That day has never come to an end even today. Praise God. The season of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, that season has never ended today. The day it will end, rapture will take place. Because the Bible says, and the Spirit of God, Will, will, will be taken away, right? And he will carry with him every person who is in the spirit. Why? Because they carry a spiritual body. Now, if they carry a spiritual body, they have to go with their reality. And their reality is in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now, the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. Let's continue. The general assembly of the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all, the spirit of just men made perfect. Now this reality that, that the writer of the book of Hebrews, they say he is not known, but every time I read it, I hear like it's Paul. Now the next verse, the Bible says, I want to show you something. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Now this reality, the whole of it is captured in the mountain of transfiguration. So let me show you something so I show you the existence, our dual existent in the spirit and in Christ. For whoever is in Christ, if you have been accepted in Christ, you are Christ. Let me repeat that statement very slowly. If you have been accepted in Christ, you are Christ. Praise God. Now, in the mountain of transfiguration, you can look at the book of Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 and all the way to 5. I just want to show you something. By 7.15, we'll have finished. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, John, and James. These are men, right? Peter, John, and James. Now, he took them, uh, he, he took he, uh, his, and his brother, led them up to a high mountain by themselves. Now, the Bible said, but you have come to Mount Zion. So he led them to a mountain by themselves. He carried men. But there is a, a reality that needs to exist in a certain man so that he can come to this mountain. One, he must be in the church of the firstborn. Do you believe the disciples are in the church of the firstborn? Now, the other thing is that their names must be written in, in heaven. Now, do you remember Jesus telling them, do not be excited because you have casted out demons, but that your names are written in they are written in heaven. So they are qualifying on the results that require a man, though he has a physical body on earth, to ascend to the mountain of the Lord. One of the qualifications, they must be of the church of the firstborn. Peter, John, and James were there. They must also, their names must be written in heaven. Jesus himself by his mouth, he told them that do not be excited because you have casted out demons, but your names are written in, the, are written in heaven. Now the next verse, the Bible says, 
and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as right. Now, this reality of what changed, this reality of what changed, they stopped seeing Jesus of Nazareth, the one they had ascended to, and he took on his heavenly body, this body that was transfigured, and his face shining like the sun, and his clothes becoming as white as snow, is the same reality that John the Revelator saw in the book of Revelation chapter 1 from verses 10. I was in the spirit. Now understand, the man was in the spirit, and he ascended so that he can see the things of the spirit. He, saw, he said, I saw his whose, whose head is as white as snow whose face is like the brilliance of the sun, whose clothes are as white, as, uh, as shining white, whose belt is the belt of truth, out of his mouth a double-edged sword, and his feet like burning bronze. So what they were seeing, the transfiguration they were seeing about Jesus Christ, is something that John later came to see in the spirit. So the existence of Jesus on earth was also an existence in the spiritual realm. Now, we realize that these men qualified to stand there because they had met the qualification of men who ascend in the spirit. Now, the qualification of men who ascend in the spirit are men who have been born of the spirit. Now, whoever is born again is born of as many as they believed. They, be, they were given the right to become the sons of God. Born not out of the will of a man or out of the will of the flesh, but born of God. Now, those who are born of the spirit, they do not have the God kind of life. Listen to this clearly. Those who are born of the spirit, they do not have the God kind of life. They have the life of God. That is why the manifestations of men... Now, now, let, let's finish this. Let's finish this, sir. Now, the next thing that happens in this uh, place, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with them. I believe that when the graves opened, part of the spirit of men and the bodies of men that were seen waking up are men who ascended to what the Bible calls in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. We are surrounded by a witness, a crowd of witnesses. Now, because Moses and Elijah also did not see death, they were taken, then they appeared because they were the conditions that arouse a man to appear in the third heaven have been met. They were men whose, whose names are written in heaven. They are the church of the firstborn. Jesus Christ himself had transfigured to the reality, so, so to, the, to the realities of heaven, and they were being expressed through him. Then the Bible says the third thing, we must confirm the third thing, that they have come to the mountain to the city of the living God. We must see the living God. Now the Bible says, uh, the next verse, then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So Peter began to understand the realities that we are walking in does not require what the earth requires for something to be sustained and to exist. It does not require somebody to eat doma and guashe. There is a reality that has happened to Jesus that we are partakers of the same that does not require food to exist. Now the Bible says, the next verse, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. We said in the Holy of Holies, there is no lamp. It is the glory of God that lights up. So because the realities of the spiritual realm had been met on that mountain, then God, because he exists in that reality, manifested himself as a bright cloud overshadowing them. That is why when Peter, Paul is describing to, Jesus, to Timothy who... who God is, he says, he is an immortal being that dwells in an approachable light where men cannot go unless they are spirits. Now, the next verse, uh, the same verse, the Bible says, and suddenly, the same verse, sorry, suddenly, and suddenly, a voice came up came out of the crowd saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So, but you have come to Zion the city of the living God. So the living God began to speak because the conditions of the realities of heaven have been met. And now even Paul and uh, even, uh, even Peter, John and James can hear this reality. If this reality can take place in your life and in your spirit today and you be born of the spirit, what happens is that you are called out of the grave. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, we don't have time to read, Ezekiel 37 from verses 
12, from verses 11, after Paul, after Ezekiel had prophesied to the bones and they had come together and he breathed life to them, he stood again, prophesy and tell them that I will give you, I will call you out of your graves and I will give you life if you can land there. Then he said, son of man, these bones are, go to the next house, uh, therefore prophesy and say to, to them, thus says the Lord, behold, O oh, my people, I will open up your graves. The place where you died when Adam disobeyed, I will open up that with this reality of the word of God because the word of God separates the soul and the spirit. Now, when man died in the spirit, it means that the spirit was absorbed in the soul. So when the word of God came through Jesus Christ, he separated the soul and the spirit so that the order of God can come back, that the spirit rules the soul and the soul rules the body. So the grave shall give forth and I will open up your grave and cause you to come up from the graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Every time you read the word rad in the Old Testament, the word that must come into your mind is kingdom. So I will bring you into a kingdom. The next verse, the Bible says, Rihatosh Faria. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. The next verse, the Bible says, Helita, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. So the existence of the life of God is in his spirit. So when he puts it in a man, the day Jesus died and ascended in heaven, the work was completed when he sent his spirit. So that when you receive the spirit of God, he begins to bring the life, the life of God in you so that when men will begin to see you functioning, they will say what they said in the book of, in the book of Acts chapter 14 and verses 11. They said that now gods have come to live among us in the likeness of men now. And understand this. They did not say that men are behaving like gods. They say it is gods that have come and they are behaving like men. It's the same reality that existed in the book of Genesis 18 when three men appeared to, when three men appeared to Abraham. The Bible says two went to burn Sodom, but Abraham continued to start with God. So God, gods had come in the likeness of men. It is the same reality of every regenerated man who is born again. They exist as gods in the likeness of men. Stand up so that we can pray. I advise if you can listen to this recording again, it will do you great. When the spirit of God comes aboard into the spirit of man, there is an interpenetration that brings the reality of God. That that which was in the mind of God from the word go, that let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness, begins to find expression through a man. So that when you meet a man like Stephen, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 6 and verses 15, that while they were having a conversation with the council, his face was changed into a face of an angel. Praise God. When you meet men like Elijah, their Elisha, their spirits would leave their body and follow Gehazi because there is a reality that exists in the spiritual realm in that they are spirits before they were men with bodies. There is a reality for you that you must ascend to where you exist on this earth as a spirit that has a body, not as a body that has a spirit because the the configuration of God is that the spirit is the one that has communion with God. That is why you judge things from the spirit, not from the soul. You, you, you see something and you begin, you are conscious, the God conscious in you wakes up and begins to say this is not right. You are senses in the spirit. You have an intuition in the spirit that begins to say no, I don't think this is right. It has no interruption from the things that are happening on earth, but your spirit already has passed a judgment that this reality You look at your family, even before you begin to see what is happening, the patterns that are existing within your family lineage, your spirit can ascend in the spiritual realm among the spirits of just men and do some interrogations and begin to see where we begin to fail because spirits are eternal beings. Ah, because we were breathed from God, spirits are eternal beings. We have received the life of God and your spirit can do up, can make a prayer that will change the things in your life. 
how I pray that tonight, that the Spirit of God will open your eyes. In the next two minutes, just begin to speak in tongues. In two minutes, that the Spirit of God will open your eyes so that you begin to see. When you read the Bible, you see the realities of the spiritual realm before you begin to see the realities on earth. The Bible says, I was, my spirit was taken and I saw you as you are going to Gehazi. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 2 and verses 1, that and the Lord said, stand up that I may speak to you. And when he began to speak, by his spirit I stood up. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 8, the Bible says, and he took me by my rocks. His spirit took me by my rocks and put me in between the heavens and the earth. My brothers and my sisters, there is a reality in the spiritual realm where you exist as a spirit. And that spirit is able to command the things that are happening here on earth. Somebody just lift up your voice and begin to declare that there are realities in the spiritual realm that must be seen by this physical body. In the spirit, if Mas sofre handes e zia randos.